Hello everyone, I'm Takahiro Hara from Osaka University, Japan. It is my big honor to have this opportunity to present our work here in this event. The title of my presentation is Cross-Domain Approaches for User Activity Prediction in Online and Real Worlds. So this is a joint work with Nago University and KDDI Research, which is the second largest mobile phone carrier. As you know, in smart cities, various uh, kinds of the different services support people's daily life for both online and offline. Since there are so many uh, applications in smart cities, personalization is very important. So services should adaptively change according to user preferences and characteristics. Now I'd like to talk about the problem addressed in this project and our idea. So it is important to provide personalized services by analyzing big service data, uh, such as the service usage log, to provide the users the comfortable services. However, currently there is a strong limitation. It is difficult to share user or persona model constructed in different service providers or domains due to the privacy issue and interest or light issue. So our idea tackled to this problem is to transfer the prediction model between domains without exchanging raw data and user IDs. This figure shows just the image. Before now, there's a kind of wall between each pair of the uh, domains and they cannot share any raw data ID or user predict activity prediction model. Here our idea is not removing the walls, but developing some techniques such as a persona matching and prediction model transfer to go beyond the wall with the existing of wall. In this case, even if some domain doesn't have enough data to model the user activity, it can reuse the good model constructed in different domains. Now I'd like to talk about some example scenarios. First, uh, the web advertisement and e-commerce domain, both online. Uh, this is our uh, project case. We may be able to predict the user's purchase pattern activities in the e-commerce domains from web browsing history or web access pattern. The second example is web advertisement and Wi-Fi service domain, online and real-world dom different domains. This is our ongoing study. We may be able to predict the user's visiting locations in the real world from web browsing history. The last one is Wi-Fi service domain and e-commerce domain. This should be our next step. We may be able to predict the user's purchase activities in the e-commerce site from users' real space activities, such as the visiting locations or movement in the real world. This kind of cross-domain approach is very challenging because we assume completely different domains. As you know, there are so many existing studies on cross-domain approach, but almost all of them assume very similar domains, such as the uh, two different e-commerce sites. But anyway, they assume the very similar uh, category services. So our approach is quite different because we assume completely different domains. Now I'd like to introduce some, some uh, achievement of our research. The first part, we focus on the online and online cross-domain approach. Concretely, we assume the web advertisement and e-commerce domain. Here, our goal is to develop a cross-domain recommendation system. And the motivation is as follows. As you know, the many e-commerce services sell a large number of products in a short time. So this is a kind of flash sales. Many new products appear on the market, but disappear from the market very quickly. In addition, most users have uh, just a few or no experiences of real purchase. So they're just looking or getting some free coupon. In this sense, there are so many new users and new products, uh, they don't have any uh, interaction with each other in terms of the purchase. So it is difficult to model the user's purchase pattern only from the data obtained in the e-commerce domain. In other words, 
we should address the cost start problem for both new user and new product. So our idea here is to use the, uh, the cross domain approach. This is based on the fact that most people frequently view web pages. So our approach here is to utilize rich persona model constructed in web advertisement domain for product recommendation in the e-commerce domain. Here our hypothesis is web browsing patterns give some hint on the purchase pattern in the e-commerce domain. Luckily, we could obtain the uh, real data from these two domains. For web advertisement domain, we could obtain the 1.3 billion web browsing logs from the 2.5 million users. And for e-commerce uh, domain, we could obtain the 15 million product view and purchase data from 0.25 million users. We perform the personal modeling using this data and develop the recommendation system based on the cross-domain approach. Now I'd like to uh, talk about the detail of the proposed model based on the Web2 word 2 back uh, deep learning approach. Here this system uh, consists of the two steps. The first step is modeling of the user and product. So we generate the user and the product embeddings or vectors from text. Here the interesting thing is the we use the different two data sources. For user modeling, we use the web pages obtained in the web advertisement domain, and for uh, product modeling, we use the uh, the product description obtained in the e-commerce domain, and we perform what to back that generate the vector from the text to back generate the user and the product um, embeddings. Here, the important thing is we don't use any purchase histories to model both the user and product. That's why we can handle the new user and new item and solve the code start problem. And the next step, that step two, uh, we develop the recommendation model based on the machine learning from the user's purchase histories. Here, we first use the purchase history. Of course, we need to use them because we need to learn the pattern of the purchase between the user and items. Now I'd like to talk about the uh, performance study result. Here the, we aim to predict the user reaction to product recommendation. And the concrete task is finding the one product bought by the user among the 1,500 product. So that is the very tough task because we need to find one correct answer uh, from the 1,500 candidate. The comparison method, uh, a cosine similarity based method, and linear model method, and also the random recommendation. The cosine similarity method is the most uh, popular method that are used in the real market. And the performance metric is the ratio that correct product bought by the user appears on the list of top K recommendation. That means the, uh, the system recommends K items or product, and if the correct answer is included in the list, that means the hit. And we calculate the hit ratio for uh, each of the comparison method. So this graph shows the result. The uh, random approach and the cosine similarity based approach shows a very bad performance. Less than 1% of the hit ratio, even for with the uh, 10 product recommendation. Our proposed approach could achieve the 26% accuracy or hit ratio. This is surprisingly high. And uh, 50 times higher than the random approach and 25 times higher than the cosine similarity approach. So this really does show the uh, effectiveness of the cross-domain approach. Now I'd like, I'd like to move on the next uh, step, the part two, the cross-domain approach online and real world. And the real world means the location service data. Now I'd like to add new domain, the Wi-Fi service domain, at uh, the real world domain. 
currently we are uh, working on the how to model the user uh, in such a real world domain and here the most important things in the uh, persona models constructed in different domains especially online and real world need to be integrated or transformed to perform some cross-domain approach so one possible idea is modeling users or personas as embeddings or vectors after that uh, what we should do is just uh, uh, transforming the vectors uh, between the domains. Now I'd like to talk about our ongoing work to model users from historical data on beaching location. Our approach is quite interesting. Most existing study on the user uh, modeling uh, in the real world just focusing on the real positions and the transition on the positions. But we take into account not only position, but also state time and number of people for each position. So that means we assign some semantics or meaning to each location. Here, uh, we don't directly model the user, but we first try to model each location and then model the user. And giving some semantics to, to each location. Concretely, we par uh, partition the whole space into the 100 square meter regions and perform word to back approach based on the state time and number of people. So this uh, graph shows uh, some uh, typical clusters of the location based on the meaning. The cluster 2 uh, represents office areas where the number of people and the state time increase during daytime and the cluster 3 represent eating and shop area uh, where the people or uh, number of people and stay time increase uh, during the night time and cluster 4 shows the residential area where the number of people and stay time increases in the morning and night so these kind of the information are very useful to model the location not just the position but also the meaning of the location after giving the meaning to each location, we generate the user vectors based on the transition of the location. The typical example include the office workers. Uh, these users uh, stay in the uh, residential area in the morning and move to the office area during daytime and come back to the, the residential area at night. Another example is bar workers. Uh, those people uh, stay in the residential area until noon and move to the eating or shopping area from the evening and come back to the residential area at midnight. So by doing so, uh, we can model the user in more detail than any existing method that focus only on the position and transition trajectory of the user. After modeling the uh, user in the real world, we try to do some cross uh, domain approach, but Actually, this year we failed because of the COVID-19. So due to this issue, uh, we couldn't obtain good data b for both online and offline or real world. But we didn't give up to continue our research, but rather we changed our mind to do better research in this situation. Now I'd like to uh, talk about our new direction here the question is, should we care about COVID-19 for user activity prediction? And this project just started. Concretely, if the user activity significantly change in unusual situations like COVID, the prediction model constructed in usual situations don't work well, and the quality of services degrades for both user and service provider side. So we need to solve this problem. In other words, activity prediction model should adapt to change of the user activity even in emergency and new normal situation. So this is the motivation of our new direction. So as a first step, we have conducted some preliminary analysis on available data of the Wi-Fi and web advertisement domain to examine the impact of COVID-19 on the user activity. This, this graph shows the user activity change on in the real world 
that are observable from the Wi-Fi provider data. We observed the data from February 1st to until the August 2nd. The blue line, the upper left, shows the overall average of the user activity that are based on the count of the user in each access point. So the, during the peak of the first peak of the COVID-19, the user activity in the real world decreased and started recovering. But this kind of change are quite different uh, between the, uh, the category or the location. The upper uh, right shows the continuous decrease case, very bad case, uh, including the thermal park, amusement park like Disney World. The people hesitate to get together uh, in the very crowded area. That's why they, that kind of activity keep very low. And the minor change, the uh, bottom right case, include the golf course, and the mass retailer. Mass retailer is a kind of the big shopping center. The shopping center case is very natural because people have to buy something to live. But the golf course case, uh, I don't know exactly, but the golf player didn't want to change their activity even in the current the COVID-19 situation. The last case is the recovery case, the first decreasing and recovery. So that includes public transportation and the zoo and the botanical garden. So the zoo and the botanical garden case uh, is based on the fact that the people can keep the distance, even if they enjoy the zoo. So this graph shows the uh, activity change online world. So the overall average, the upper left, showed the uh, the activity of the user slightly decreasing during the COVID-19. But it also uh, has a strong differences uh, between the category of the, uh, the online services. Here, the, we count the web accesses to each category of the contents, and the continuous decrease case include the society uh, contents that are strongly linked to the real-world activity. Society means that some kind of the contents that are uh, focusing on the uh, finding some new partners for dating or marriage and also the attending the party in the real world. So this kind of the services, the um, user access is very less because people hesitate to meet some other people. And the minor change case, the bottom right case, include the user hobby uh, like uh, food and drink and standard fashion. Even in the COVID-19 situation, people keep to uh, search the information that are related to their hobby. The last case is the first decreasing and recovering slightly. That includes the travel. Based on this, this fact, the, we can observe the significant change in the both the online and real-world services. And the last uh, uh, one shows the the change of the user's activity. So the uh, left table shows the transition of the user uh, clusters. And the upper right shows the uh, user clusters before COVID. And the bottom one shows the uh, user cluster after COVID. So uh, the upper shows the user activities are very different between users. And the uh, uh, cluster 2 shows the users who are very active in the real world. So the yellow cell shows the uh, typical keyword that represent user activities uh, in the real world. And the white one shows the activity in the online. So the uh, cluster 2 shows the very uh, active users in the real world. But after COVID, these users are diverse into many uh, different uh, clusters because they have to give up some activities in the real world during the COVID situation and they carefully choose only a uh, few uh, activities. That's why they diverse into the different uh, clusters after COVID. As shown in this uh, result, the change of the uh, activity is quite complicated and the user activity has significantly changed both the online and real world and pattern is quite difficult to model. In particular, the after COVID, 
the amount of data obtained is not enough. So this is very challenging uh, research uh, topic. So we will try to solve this problem by applying cross-domain approaches, uh, such as modeling user activity using a variety of data acquired in different domains. So we focus on the cross-domain approach. Now I'd like to summarize my talk. Uh, in this talk, uh, we introduced our recent work on the cross-domain approaches for personal modeling and user activity prediction in both online and real-world services. So our future plan include uh, we uh, use the other domains data and also the we try to predict uh, develop the prediction model uh, that transfer the uh, the model uh, from the uh, user situation to the emergency or new normal situation like COVID. Thank you for listening.